the wire. Pad, pad the, the wire. wire is back, yeah, we gotta baby. Pad the wire. I like it. Yeah, he likes it. What's that? I like it from. I think it's from uh, the, the, the testosterone's high today. I like it. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I wonder what that is from. The testosterone high today. Dude, the testosterone <laughs> is high today. That's what he's trying to say, testosterone. But, okay. Uh, yeah, we're going to go to quarterbacks for the waiver wire week eight. First on our board, we have our boy Deshaun Watson. Um, this is just kind of like a sneaky ad, right? Yeah, so uh, I guess you could say the – so Cesaron is getting high because the trade deadline is approaching. I think it's next Tuesday. Uh, I think it's November 2nd. Don't quote me on that. But, yeah, I think it's coming up next Tuesday, the trade deadline. So the Deshaun Watson trade rumors are starting to heat up. You know, obviously you got a lot of rumors coming out to Miami. Yeah, it's ne Tuesday, November um, 2nd at 4 p.m. Yeah. And, you know, just as a Miami fan, let me go on a little rant for a second. I just – obviously going from Tua to Deshaun would be an upgrade. I'm not saying that Deshaun's not fantastic and he's not great and he wouldn't help make the Miami Dolphins a better football team. But it's like, dude, I just hate the criticism that Tua gets. Like, the guy hasn't even played a full 16 games yet. Um, you know, like, I get it. He's had a couple turnovers the last couple games. But, I mean, he's highly efficient with the ball. He's highly accurate. He's got like six t passing touchdowns in the last two games. He's had over 300 yards and like 290 yards in the other game. It's just like I don't think Miami is losing because of Tua. It's like, yeah, you upgrade at the position, but that doesn't solve the run defense. That doesn't solve how bad the pass defense is now. It doesn't solve the fact that Will Fuller and Devontae Parker can't stay healthy and stay in the field. So as a Dolphins fan, it would be tight to get Deshaun Watson, but it doesn't solve anything. There's just so many other things or issues that the Miami Dolphins need to fix or address in my opinion at least for them to be successful um and be a playoff for a super bowl contender but yeah so you got the miami rumors heating up for deshaun watson a couple of the teams that have emerged are the carolina panthers and the denver broncos and low-key for me i think the carolina panthers would be the best situation for him there i mean obviously sam darnold came out he was hot like hansel a couple easy matchups but the last couple weeks he's been pretty bad i guess it also Maybe it's the CMC factor for Sam Darnold that, you know, it's it's pretty easy when you just throw the ball to CMC 10 times and it's a five-yard pass and he, you know, he gets you 80, 90 yards, you yeah. know, after the catch. Um, obviously, CMC hasn't been there, so that obviously could be in correlation to why Sam Darnold hasn't been very good. But, I mean, yeah, if the Panthers got Deshaun Watson, just think of the weapons they have. I mean, DJ Moore, I know Robbie Anderson hasn't been doing much, but they paid that guy a ton of money, so they plan to utilize him for the next couple of years. Terrace Marshall talented rookie out of LSU and then yeah hopefully CMC can come back and stay healthy so if I'm the Carolina Panthers I'm probably doing everything in my power to pull off this trade and get Deshaun Watson because they do have a good defense and if they could just upgrade to that quarterback position I think the Panthers can make a serious run in the playoffs to you know contend and here's the thing is like your defense can but with the Panthers defense your defense can only be so good um if they're on the field constantly <laughs> You know what I mean? If you're yeah. constantly punting, the, the time possession is the wrong way. It's going to screw you up. So, yeah. in defense of Panthers defense. But, yeah, Deshaun Watson, he's available in 75% of leagues. So, you know, I've went, gone out in a couple of leagues. I've grabbed him and, and I stashed him. You know, in one league I have Tannehill. He's kind of been underperforming. I know Tannehill, Julio Jones, and A.J. Brown haven't been able 100% on the field together. So, maybe that's kind of a, a you know, factor. Obviously, they run the ball a ton with Derrick Henry. But, um, you know, if you're kind of struggling at the quarterback position, it's like – why not take a shot on Deshaun Watson if he's out there and just stash him for the next couple of weeks? Uh, you yeah. know, and if it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, whatever, you just drop him back down to the waiver wire. You know, as far as, like, the court cases go, you know, if he, he does get traded, he's he's eligible to play right away. So, like, he can literally step in very first week with the new team and play. He's not, like, suspended or being fined or anything like that. Um, I think the only way he would get in trouble is if all these court cases turn into felonies. So, but I... Yeah, because he's technically – it's all alleged right now. It's, yeah. He's not charged with anything technically. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah, go out, grab him, stash him because, like I said, if he goes to like team like the Panthers, you know, even Miami, I guess if he does go there and they do get Parker, Fuller, Gusecki, Jalen Waddle, all those four guys fully healthy on the field, I mean, those are a ton of weapons uh, for a guy like Deshaun Watson to utilize. And then the Broncos obviously have some good weapons uh, in their in their own right as well. So, Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I I, I have him in Dynasty, and everybody's trying to trade for for him now. All of a sudden, uh, but yeah, let's move on to the next quarterback. We got our 
Hello there. Hey, listen, right now, I know we talk about them a lot, but Underdog Fantasy it has a really good deal right now. It's a player pick em app. It's a uh, DFS app. It's very similar to DraftKings or FanDuel, but this is better. It's brand new, very easy to use interface. Um, but if you download the app right now and use promo code AVG, they used to hook up with uh, $10 with your first deposit. Now, right now, they're matching you up to $100. So if you put $100 in the app right now on your first deposit, you will get a, a, an extra $100 to play around with. They got player pick that You can even do a private match inside Underdog Fantasy. It's pretty dope um so you can like challenge people and whatnot you don't have to maintain a, a team for all year so you can just draft your team play that week draft the next team next week you could do it daily in like a thursday night game as well so go check it out tons of prizes three hundred dollars come on sign up it's the best and use promo code avg now back to your video boy kirk cousins uh, the, 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 yeah, Kirk Cousins. No, they weren't on. Never mind. Um, Kirk Cousins, I feel like every year he's a, he's a guy that you, we end up talking about on waiver wire. You can always like, he seems like to be a guy you can stream. He's always kind of half available. I always liked Kirk back in the day. I used to be big Ben Kirk Cousins and just flip him out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking for a streaming quarterback or, you know, maybe if you just kind of need a quarterback, I mean. Kirk Cousins is available in like 40 to 60% of leagues. This week they're going to be at home against Dallas, both teams coming off a bye. I mean, I like Kirk Cousins in this matchup. Uh, we've seen Dallas, you know, you know, and I know Trayvon Diggs is having a, a crazy good year with, in terms of like the interceptions, but, you know, their pass defense has been giving it up. Um, Dallas has allowed 290 or more passing yards in five of the six games so far this season. And Kirk Cousins already has three games where he's thrown 300 or more passing yards. He also has the fourth best completion percentage in the NFL. So I love this matchup for Kirk Cousins this week against the Dallas Cowboys. I think this will be a shootout. Uh, I like the over in this game. So, yeah, give me all the Kirk Cousins this matchup in, yeah, I mean, the, this week. I mean, the Cowboys are letting up letting at least 20 points a game for sure and and in a lot of games 30 point i mean 21 28 20 uh, uh 17 with the chargers game but the you know they're they are letting up there's a couple games where they're letting up like 30 something points 31 points to the bucks you know 34 point oh uh, yeah never mind uh but yeah so the cowboy i like that matchup yeah. it's a shootout Sh- should be a, i mean should be a top 10 play kirk cousins this week Top 10. No, oh, I like it. Fucking send it in. Uh, You know. All right. Let's go on to Daniel Jones. Did you see the catch he made? I did see the catch. It's pretty nice. It's like move, move over Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, There's a, a new on, one-handed catch in I saw a bunch of shit on, on Twitter. It was like OD, ODJ. Uh, yeah, uh, Daniel Jones. You know, it's crazy. Even with like without the weapons, Daniel Jones can be – you you can start him sometimes. I mean, yeah, Danny Dimes, he's 75% available right now. Um, you know, they're going to be against the Chiefs in Kansas City. And I don't know what it is, but the Kansas City Chiefs defense has just been doo-doo. Like, they've been, they've been yeah, so really bad. bad. Um, in terms of just, like, giving up, like, total points, like, you know, offense and defense, they've allowed 27 or more points against their defense in every single game except for one. The only game that uh, – only team that didn't score 27 – or more points against the Kansas City Chiefs was the Washington football team. You know, Danny Dimes, he came out hot. He was hot like Hansel. First three weeks, he had 20 or more points. Then he fell off. He got hurt in week five. Uh, and then after that, two tough matchups against the Rams and the Panthers defense. Also, he's, you know, short some receivers. Sterling Shepard's been banged up. Darius Slayton finally came back, but he was banged up. Galladay's been banged up for the majority of the year. Kadarius Toney. The electric rookie, you know, we'll touch on him in a little bit. He's been banged up as well. Saquon's been out. So, I mean, he's just, he's just you know, the, this offense is just falling apart. But, I mean, like I said, Kansas City, they're just giving it up like Blair. So, this is a money matchup here. I'm expecting the Chiefs at home to get get that offense right and put up some points, which in return will mean that Danny Dimes is going to have to slang that thing and put up some points. It will obviously help if he can get these receivers healthy, if he can get Galladay back, if he can get Sterling Shepard back, if he can get Kadarius Toney back. I mean, even if he gets like two out of those three back, it'll just boost his value um, for this week and going forward. Yeah. I, I mean, Daniel Jones is – he's – he's uh, what, how do we say? Uh, Hansel so hot right now. Is Hansel hot? Hot like Hansel. Uh, 
Let's go on to my guy here. I put uh, we got Trevor Lawrence. Um, I know Trevor Lawrence isn't like the sexiest play. I know he had a couple weeks where he, you know he's thrown a lot of interceptions, um, but the uh, Trevor Lawrence plays the Seahawks in Week Eight. The la- okay, check it out. In the last three weeks, he's only had one interception. He's had he has had two rushing touchdowns, and he in the past two games he's thrown over 270 yards. Last week threw 300 over 300 yards. Um, I think he's on the up and up. His roster percentage is at 35 percent right now. And going up against the Seahawks, I mean, if you – it the Seahawks-Saints uh, game last night on Monday night was very, like, slow scoring. So you might be like, oh, well, you, maybe you can't pass against this team. No. Jameis Winston and Geno Smith couldn't put anything together. It was the most embarrassing thing for quarterbacks I've ever seen in my life. Like, the, like it, was, it was so insane. These guys were just like – it seemed to be that these quarterbacks were incompetent. Um, so – I don't think it's that, and I think Trevor Lawrence is going to show up and do well. I like. I expect a big game from Marvin Jones, um, and whatnot. So I, yeah, I like it. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, week eight, stream him, add him on your waiver wire. It's pretty hot. I like it. Like, like you said, so I mean, right the guy's now. offering the rushing upside as well. Two touchdowns um, in the last couple weeks, coming off a bye. Um, you know, and that's one thing we touched on. You know, when he was coming out of Clemson, he, is his rushing upside? And I, I don't quote me on it exactly, but I think it was like back-to-back seasons he had like seven rushing touchdowns. So a guy who, you know, like I said, when they're getting close, they'll utilize him at the goal line on these on those RPOs. I mean, look, interceptions happens, especially with these younger with, with these rookies. Uh, Peyton Manning had like the like a league record of interceptions his first year. Yeah, you know, so. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Adam. Let's go on to my boy Carson Wentz. Uh, I like Carson Wentz this week. Um, he he's been like surprisingly good. He's ballsy. <laughs> he does shit where I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like you've been injured so many times. Why are you like running the ball up the way you are? Uh, but he's, surprisingly, he has a little bit of rushing upside. Um, sorry, I'm losing track of what. Where I'm at. Uh, but, yeah, I like Carson Wentz this week um, playing against the Titans. Titans do – pass rush did look a little bit better. Got an over-under of 49. I do think that, uh, you know, if T.Y. T. Hilton comes back, you got more options. They played in the rain, too. It was a really rainy game if you watched that Sunday night game against the Niners. Uh, so that limited uh, on their passing. I mean, there was a lot of times where people were dropping stuff. A lot of stuff like, you know, people were fumbling the ball, interceptions and things like that where they wouldn't happen in a normal game without the rain. So, uh, yeah, I like the Colts. It's in Indianapolis, so you don't got to deal with any weather. So, um, Tennessee Titans, I think that should be a decently high-scoring game. I think it could be a shootout possibly. I mean, he's, he's like a QB, too, for me. Uh, I mean, the last couple games. I think, yeah, if the, you're in a pinch. The, the rain maybe. game and then, you know, against Houston, they were smacking Houston, so no need to throw. But he has had two, at least two touchdowns. And um, uh, five of these seven games, um, the only thing is that the upside's kind of not there. I mean, only two over two hundred fifty passing yards twice all season. But like I said, a couple of games where you know they're kind of blowing they're blowing some teams out. Weather has some factor there. Obviously, if Ty Hilton can come back, like you said, Mike, it just kind of boosts the value there. I think uh, it, my, him them. and Michael Pittman are just getting started. You got to realistically think. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I mean, like I said, because you know he was banged up for pretty much. All of training camp and preseason, yeah, Carson Wentz. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, they're still kind of just learn, you know, building that chemistry and that rapport. But, you know, it, it is reassuring to see that, you know, he does like to take these deep shots. I feel like he does take a couple deep shots each game. So, like, you like seeing that. Like, he's not afraid to, you know, take take the deep shot and, you know, go for the home run. Yeah, as, as on the highlights we're playing, he, he throws a fucking yeah. bomb. Yeah, so. <laughs> it was the Eagles. Hey, did you like that video? No, not the one of Big Ben completely eating shit when nobody even touched him. I'm talking about our fantasy football video we just did. You just watched. Well, guess what? That was just a clip from the full audio podcast. So if you want to check out the whole thing, links down below. AVG Fantasy Football Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, all of them. Anywhere you can get audio podcasts, we're there. Go ahead and check it out. And if you don't want to look at your fantasy team to look the way Big Ben does right here, Wait for it. Come on, replay. This is you're gonna be this is your fantasy team. But that won't be your fantasy team if you subscribe to AVG Fantasy Football. So go ahead, subscribe and like.
this video. Subscribe to the channel and like.